So after reading up on these motors, I decided that I should take it apart, get it cleaned up inside and outside. It's pretty grody. So I've already got these four screws off, and this baby just lifts right off. <laughs> yeah, that's nasty. This thing's seen some oil in a pretty serious way, so I'm going to have to clean that baby really, really well. I'm filming this also so I know which orientation to put the shims back in. Now, this may come out on its own. Well, I'll flip it over and try to get the other end disassembled now. Number three, Phillips. Yikes. So I'm going to have to make a little adjustment here. So, this is a mite sacrilegious to some of you out there, but it will get my job done for today, and that's what I'm concerned with. So, this thing is nasty on the inside. <clears throat> there it is. Free it right up. So I'll go around and free the others, of which there are only two. Ugh, there's that one. Now I should be able to get it by hand the rest of the way. Part of the motor housing should now come off. And look at that. I don't know how well you can see that, but that is absolutely disgusting. As is this. Apparently there's some unhappy animals outside too. Uh, so this is gonna have to get cleaned up really well. It is really quite gross. So I've been struggling to get this last bit out of the, the base of the unit here. Pardon my terminology. Um, and this bearing, I took the cap off so you could see it. This is a bearing and it's in, a, in this aluminum, cast aluminum housing. And up here where the brushes are, I don't know how well you can see this on the camera, but there's a plate with four Phillips head screws in it. Actually there are three left. And I think that might be housing holding it in. So I'm going to take these four out and see if the whole assembly will come come out of there. Uh, brushes and all. This would be the brush plate that I'm removing right now. Which actually is a good thing because if I can get this brush plate to spin, I don't intend at this very moment to be advancing the brushes, but if I do I'll be able to advance the brushes um, by drilling four new holes in this plate which contains all the brushes. Which will be really handy if I intend to go um, above the 60 volts that I want to use. been updated to 60 volts. Let's see if that was what was holding it. That tells me that bearing must be press fit, which is kind of a drag. However, the the plate for the brushes is available and moving, so one would think that with a little bit of effort, I should be able to get the this main part of the motor disassembled. It has no play here, so that tells me it must be press fit deal. So, I've got this baby up here like this. I'm going to try, well, actually with this socket, heat around this little lip to try to get this to, without heating it too much because I don't want to get that bearing hot. I just want to take the map gas torch and heat this. But first, you can see what I'm up to here. This thing is awful. 
you can see that I've already got one of these babies out and the whole thing is just absolutely disgusting. So I'm going to take all four of these out. So I should mention this is my first time tearing apart an, a motor. So for the, those of you out there who are looking and going, ooh, don't do that, I'm sorry. Anyhow, I got all four of these guys out and they're nasty, as I mentioned. Um, and now I'm going to get these coils out of here. Oh, yep, come on. There it is. Okay. Is that not the grossest, nastiest thing you've ever seen? So, uh, I've got some old gasoline, which will work just fine for cleaning this up. Just a little bit of sanding, you can see the difference. Do a little more on each one of these before I reinstall it. I'm actually not exactly sure what keeps the corrosion off of this. It is steel and it's not painted, obviously. I would guess it has something to do with electrolysis, what keeps it clean, but you can see pretty distinctly the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these. So this baby's looking a little better, a little cleaner, ready to go. Now we're just going to get this other piece apart. So I dug through my things, found this sweet puller that I'm hoping will help me to get this baby off of here without having to use heat. So I'm going to set it on the floor and give it a try. I don't have a whole lot of grip on here, but hey, what else have I got? So I just put this on the floor and it freed up. I heard a big snap. And now it's going as I'm pushing here. Oh, there it is. Gear pullers cannot be without. So I'm going to delicately remove this. The brushes are going to spring down. That's fine. And that's what we're looking at. Brushes are a lot of life left in them, really, all things considered. Could be wrong. Some appear to have more than others. But uh, anyway, that needs to be cleaned up. And this, this is what it's all about here. This is my commutator bar and I can feel just with my fingernail and my hand, my finger here, it's very rough. Or I don't know about very rough, but it's, it's rough. And uh, these commutator bars are pretty deep. I see that, but I'll put it up so maybe you can. You can see they're fairly deep in here, so if I have the shop, take a few thousandths off of here, or maybe even less, I should be good to go with this. This guy, I was experimenting with a little bit of sandpaper, if I can find it again, and without much effort, That's going to be perfect on those. There's no contact here, obviously, so just cleaning them up. And I guess I'll spray them with a little... All right, just got the commutator cleaned up at the uh, machine shop down the road. Did a really nice job. There's extremely minimal burring in here. So minimal that I'm, I'm not going to even do anything about it. If I do, I'm just going to take this out of true, uh, which would defeat the purpose of having it cleaned. One really important note that I didn't know and that I want you to know, uh, and if this is redundant, sorry. So this little end, this little dimple in the end is how the machine shop will be centering, um, this is a 60, 60 degree, apparently, um, dimple, and that's how they center this on their lathe. So the gear puller can damage this quite easily, um, and it will cost you almost twice as much if you do damage it with a gear puller, um, to have it machined at the shop because this will have to be reground or however they make this a true situation again. Um, so that being said, I didn't mess it up because I used really even pressure with my gear puller on my plate. Now this plate has four places where I couldn't get it uh, too thin. 
It just so happened that if I moved it a few times around, I was able to get the puller on here, as you recall from a previous section of this video, nice and square. And if it wasn't, I would have damaged this baby. And that would have cost me some money and time at the machine shop. So, um, as you're doing this and you're pulling this, getting this with a puller, be really careful that you're nice and square. And, since this is a bearing, when you're pulling, you should be able to let the this plate remain stationary and this uh, spin with the gear puller so that your puller, the pin on your puller doesn't friction um, take off any metal here or take it out of true, out of, out of alignment. Um, so if you let this just spin as it's coming out, it, you know, as it would want to anyway because it's a threaded apparatus, everything will be cool. Um, so, word of the wise, don't mess it up. I also painted while I had it apart with nice bright sunburst yellow paint, um, oil base of course, my motor, um, the inside is looking much much better than it was. So I'm going to go ahead and start reassembling. So be pleased to know that on the same battery, in fact a little more dead than it was before, same battery, same load, RPMs, probably three times as high as they were before rebuilding the motor, cleaning up. Easily three times as much. So, and it actually gains speed as it sits and as I jiggle the connections it gets faster. Because obviously nothing's real tight, um, which is a characteristic of a series one motor. Six volts and it spins that fast. And the load is much, there's much less um, out of balance to it sounding. It sounds like really nice. It's got an interesting whine, which I think will probably go away as the brushes wear in a little. But uh, to the new, less crappy profile of the old commutator. But, uh, so there you go. Um, rebuilt, painted, looks nice. Got a fabricated plate for this. Ooh, I'm bleeding. Um, to mount up to my bell housing so I can hook it up to my transmission. And uh, good to go. So, thanks for viewing. Subscribe. If you're interested in seeing how slow this moved before I rebuilt it, check out the uh, part two of this series.